Yes, welcome back. This is F a Rap Critic. I'm your boy Malik16. And no, I don't pass the microphone, but I'm here and we're doing our own version of Nick Knack Paddywhack because to each his own. If y'all don't understand <laughs> the reference, we talking about the special guests that I have to my right, to my left, depending on how you're viewing this. My cousin Raheem, my big brother Doc. This is Blood Family here. And um, we are talking about the 35th anniversary of the classic album by EPMD, Unfinished Business. And uh, if you have not, go revisit Category 1, where we talked about the album itself. This is Category 2, where we talk about the rap performance on this album. And with no further ado, we'll jump right into it. The first dimension is going to be personality and charisma. All right. How much personality and charisma is being displayed here by these two front men, Eric Sermon and Parrish Smith? You got Eric where, you know, he don't got, he, he's ashamed of singing <laughs> to get his point across or whatever. <laughs> and they all cocky, they all, you know, I'm getting paid and, you know, MCs can't touch us. Yeah. Eric gets to be a little bit more like dynamic and, and experimental yeah. and P's like the serious, you know, again, like right. uh, like like all the famous do, the Abbott and Costello. Yeah, and, opposites attract, yeah. Right, and so on here, I say the personality that shines through from Parrish is, you know, no nonsense. Uh, it's kind of, uh, <laughs> it's funny, because the way I characterize him is like an aggressive rock him and, uh, <laughs> a less lyrical slick rick so it's like it, <laughs> wow that's, that's, that's interesting yeah that's, <laughs> that's what i feel like they're their present at least that's how they sound right we'll talk about yeah, that yeah. in the other dimension but uh parish definitely wants you to know that he's like business and you know uh, he's welcoming all challenges while eric takes more of a like i'll dare you kind of approach uh <laughs> but he he seems to be the more light-hearted one yeah. Yeah, Paris is definitely more serious. Yeah. Eric, you know, like I say, Eric, he ain't had no shame with his list or his <laughs> uh or the singing, so <laughs> but yeah. he was but he still was aggressive at the same time. So Yeah, it's funny because they're saying the same kinds of things. Yeah. But yeah. it's just the way it, 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 it comes across and that's everything. That's really what yeah. personality and charisma is about. I don't know if either of them really had charisma on this album because yeah. they're just the way that they're rapping. Uh, but later on in their career, you get to see. That's what I can say later. Cause I mean, you, his voice actually got better as he, you know, especially when he left. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, personality is there. It's like, it's, it's hard to put your finger on, but you know, one is more serious. The other's a little bit more risky. They're saying the same kind of things because the whole album is about welcoming competition and, and squashing sucker MCs. Everything's about sucker MCs. <laughs> because That's of that, yeah. you know, I got I feel like I got to give y'all disclaimers for everything because when every <laughs> every time we get to the rages, because y'all be real generous. When y'all think about personality compared to the LL Cool J's, the Slick Ricks, the Chuck D's, what are y'all giving them on scale for one to five for this album? Man, you gonna put it with them guys, other guys? That's like a three. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you I go. mean, you know, like you said, I mean, I know they represented Long Island pretty good, but you know, with Chuck D and, you know, like you said, with LL, some of them guys, that's, they yeah. definitely, you know, step back from them. So, go kill him, Rod, go kill him. One point and I'm just kidding. I go with a three. A three, gotcha. Yeah. See that, and that could have saved the "You Had Too Much to Drink" song because they were real flat on that. So that takes mm -hmm. us to dimension two: the suspension of disbelief for the believability. So this is all about how much they make you believe them on this album. Uh, it's not a suspension of disbelief situation because they're not going into these characters. They're not telling you they're doing anything fantastic or out of this world. So it's just them saying their government names: Eric Sermon and Parrish Smith. So it mm -hmm. comes down to. How much do we believe them? 
Uh, I definitely believe him. It's um, for, for the most part. For the most part, I mean, every MC gonna act like nobody could touch him, and you know. But right, I, I, I don't know if I see Eric really getting busy in the rap battle, you know, like that. You know, <laughs> it, it sounds good, but I, I don't know at that time, especially if, if I see him demolish another MC. Maybe maybe perish at that time, but. Uh, but um, what, what about when they tell they you to go into the go into the clubs and go into the pubs? Like, is that believable? Going to the <laughs> clubs. And- yeah, on James, P P somebody he went to the, the club. It was salsa night, man. He's drinking yeah. a malta and, and, and doing the, <laughs> the cha cha. Cha cha, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I think they do it job of pointing out things that are realistic like they'll tell you real spots in the city yeah. that they were hanging out they'll talk about the real model of the car that they're driving even though i please listen to my demo right the idea that they were driving this car it broke down on their way fdr drive <laughs> on the fdr drive right and you feel the disappointment he's like eric is pushing while i got it in neutral like that's that's a description man I, and it's something yeah. I think a lot of listeners could relate to because on the other songs oh, they no are doubt. talking. On no. the other songs they are talking about uh, flyness and money and driving the bins. So to have moments like that helps. And then P does something else. He shouts out his school on strictly sapping necks out of PSU. Yeah, I was like, wow, you don't really hear rappers yeah. doing that. And yeah. he's talking about a college, not not just yeah. high school. And uh, on It Wasn't Me, It Was The Fame, he goes a little deeper and explains that. Like, hey, I, I still want to kick it with my college friends. Um, yeah. But they say I act different. And then he talked about having, like, a, another crew of rap friends, and he had to leave them behind. He's like, nah, it's just me and Eric now. <laughs> so yeah. they give you uh, digestible things. You know, I mean, yeah, both. you know, you could, I think, yeah, you could distinguish what's real and what's not real on their tracks yeah you know so like you said that that fame was definitely you know pretty personal yeah they, i mean you know they give you they give you hints here and there just like they did on the, uh, so what you're saying like you said people say we sound like the all uh, and our music was whack you know yeah so they yeah you know they 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 dip in dip in and dip out pretty good yeah and they don't go too far you know you think about a right. song like i got it made by special ed they're not talking about you know, a solid gold phone with the product. solid gold phone, <laughs> <laughs> right? So it's like, okay, yeah, I believe you got a bins because you're on the cover on the bins. So. Yeah, well, you know, they all they all stretch it, man. You just like you said, it's what it's what you can de- if you can decipher what's what's true and what's not true. So yeah, and the image. I mean, till, I mean, they doing that still now, so it's true. But with EPMD, their image matches their rap, so they they did a yeah. decent job of that, right? They, yeah go to too crazy um all right what y'all giving this for believability on one to five give it a four okay yeah i go back to my four with that yeah okay all right we're getting into it now dimension three the delivery and the use of voice this is what i was talking (laughs) about when i said it's like an aggressive rakim and uh and uh I wow. don't know, a less lyrical Slick Rick, because he, he wasn't, he's not on Slick Rick's level of cleverness and wit, but he's doing a lot of the things that Slick Rick wasn't afraid to do. Like in the middle of a verse, Slick Rick's going to break out into singing, right? It's all because of you. Yeah, like, yeah. He, he, he sounds better than Eric. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Slick knew when to do it. Slick had, yeah. he had timing, right? Uh, mm-hmm. But if you ever wanted to hear a group and you wonder what Rock Kim and Slick Rick in a in a group together would sound like, it's the closest. That's crazy. <laughs> what y'all think That's of that crazy. theory? <laughs> That's crazy right there. That's really crazy. The tongue was lazy, right? So it, it has that effect that yeah. like you could tell I don't know. I don't know if I've ever heard Eric go on record say I feel like Eric would tell you he was influenced by Slick Rick. There's a lot of that cadence and that style in, in his delivery. It might be, yeah, yeah, it might be. Yeah, I, yeah, I've never heard him reference that any time, but I mean, who, know, who knows, man? Who knows? Yeah, I never thought about that. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty good there, Malik. 
<laughs> Good job there, 16. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, they both were bringing that Long Island style. This, this style was pretty much yeah. the new style of like talk rap, right? Uh, mm -hmm. They're not doing any of the bold rap of the couple years before them. Like I was listening to, on Big Time, Heavy D has like, he splits the album. He's got like half the album, he's rapping like Rakim, Tic Tac. It, three in the row. Yeah, and the yeah, other yeah. half, he's using this big man voice. Heavy D is on that. <laughs> they don't have any of that. They're not going into yeah. like projection. Everything is talk. Shazam. Right. <laughs> yeah. Even on Nick Nack Paddywhack, they sound like they're bored. <laughs> it's like, a, yeah. hey, I, I passed either microphone. I'd rather not. Why is that? Stages on knick knack patty whack like it's not yeah like they drag it. yeah there you go it's, it's low energy on it on both of their presentations it's you funny because you can pick up when they want to you know like tap into the aggression but it just never they don't ever project in a big rap voice like i think on get the bozak where pmd comes back you can tell he's coming back hard mike check in check in and check in and check in but he's not really changing how he's delivering those lines the lines are still in that cool calm i don't know how to put my finger on it but they don't ever they don't ever turn up <laughs> it really stays yeah. at a, a talk rap level, level. Stay level yeah you stay yeah. level and so yeah. that had, would that have anything to do with the studio though some of it but it really is 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 them they're they're a prime example of what gangstar what guru said you know he made a whole song about it. it's mostly the voice yeah, yeah. Their voices didn't sound like anything. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, the closest it would be would be like aggressive Rakim and a less skilled Slick Rick. But you never heard a duo like that, and their their contrast off each other was right. perfect. But that's that's the delivery. It's it's not a lot of deviation from that. No matter how high paced the song gets, they stay cool, calm, serious. Right, right. Except for when Eric. It's basically stay the same level, just about. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. What's the song that Eric breaks out to on Who's Booty? Because I know we talk about the Luther Vandross break, but he he sang a whole part in that verse. Um, I'll yeah. be gentle. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, that was that song by uh, Frederick. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, he, nobody stopped him, man. No, they let him. He had a lot of creative freedom, man. That was like four Please bars. Be gentle, loving you. <laughs> that, that was, was like a joint back. That was a joint at that time too, man. Man, that was <laughs> four bars of him just doing what he wanted to do. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what y'all giving a delivery? <laughs> Probably have to get out of three point five, man. Okay. I'll go with a three. Okay. Three. Yeah. Yeah. Either I, way. Yeah. I still say y'all being nice because when we go into Dementia Four, the flow. I'm gonna say somebody having to revisit this album <laughs> or, or probably listen to it for the first time because I've always heard the song separately, but to hear it all together as an album, I'm like, oh, these guys had no flow. <laughs> you don't think so? None. They, there's wow. so many. There's so many songs where they're fumbling over the words. Like, okay, one, you could tell they're reading off paper, but, which is, that's par for the course. It's 1989. Yeah. Most rappers are writing things down, pen and paper on a composition notebook. And it's hard when you stand in front of a mic and have to read. <laughs> Raheem, can you, can you attest to that as a rapper? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. It, you know. So, so give me an example. Give me an example. Uh, Who's somebody that just had so slick Rick? He's he's a liquid flow, like his stuff sounds natural. Like he rehearsed it, he prepared it. Big Daddy Kane, they're liquid. You know, slick Rick is is gonna be like, what? <laughs> what did he say? Oh, uh, ravishing, I uh, impress, he courageous, so can get Like yeah. he's just gonna flow. These guys, both Eric and yeah. Paris do it. They will squeeze but, a bunch of words in where they don't belong. Yeah, the flow, the flow definitely. Ah is not great but that their delivery is definitely better i mean just with the contrast you got one with this voice the other one with this voice you know what i mean projecting so to me they deliver all right but yeah the flow is nothing special about the flow. 
Yeah, they go off beat. Um, on Nick Knack, Patty Rack, they all go off beat. K Solo goes the most off beat. That's why I was surprised y'all gave him <laughs> such a, a high rating. Like, it's just, they don't care about the beat behind them. They're just getting the rap out. So, Doc, you asked for an example. Go to, please listen to my demo. <laughs> Gets better and I would like to go warm, but I was brought back to reality. But I was brought back to reality by the people. You do a lot of that. Yeah. Get cramped, that is. There's no ride in the beat. They just are rapping. The beat is happening and they're just rapping. And if it lines up, it lines up. But they don't they don't have any problem doing that. You know, cramming it or just Yeah. I mean, I never paid out. that much attention. You you kinda, you know. You broke that down pretty good, so yeah, I definitely. I'm gonna listen to it again when we get off. I'm gonna see. Yeah, I mean, it's Nick Knack, Patty Wack, and listen yeah. to my demo is yeah. where it stands out the most. But they do it on uh, at least half the album, and I'm like, oh, they really are not like you know, Kane is going around in and out. Yeah, he flows. Just, he flows smooth. Well, I mean, I guess that's what makes them who they are, right? So. Right. Yeah. Right, but it, it when I think about Flo, I'm like, oh, they would never in this race. Like they would, they would be eliminated from the race when it comes to mm. Flo. But, and I think part of, I think they did, probably didn't care too much about that. That's why they like we the slow flowers. We yes, yeah, we, right. but we stand in that little lane. Just on, we too cool. We yes. too cool. They could go and do all of the extra stuff. You know yeah, what I mean? Thank you, Rob. That's right, man. Tell him, man. Save, go. save him, man. From EPFD, man. I couldn't, I couldn't have said it better. That's what I was waiting. I was waiting for the expert rap opinion to come out. There we go. It's, it's like they do pride themselves on it. You hear PMD the whole album saying MC Slow Flow, MC Slow Flow, and, and boy, <laughs> do they live up to it. What y'all giving them uh, for Flow? And keep in mind, if you're saying if you're giving them a high number, you're putting them up there with. Big Daddy Canes and the Heavy Games <laughs> and the Slick Rick uh, and the Rock Kims because Rock Kim ain't never off beat. Yeah, he's I mean, one of the few two, people that's never off beat. Two point five. Two point five. Yeah, I was gonna say three. So yeah, yeah Rock Kim. One thing, even though him and PMD have similar styles, because Rock Kim said it, that jazz musician background and he used to write. Right with the right. melody points in mind. He'd be like, this is where I'm going to land. So he had a natural melody. Rough enough to break New York from Long Island. Dun, 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 dun. EPMD's yeah. not doing that, it's talking. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, AJ, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you, you can definitely distinguish that, yeah. And the Eric with the list, sometimes he's tripping over that. All right, so Dimension 5, the wordplay and the bar in 10, what are they saying? on this mic uh raheem uh lyrically <laughs> anything stand out from epmd here uh, um uh not really yeah. not not really. they just they just confident in who they are pretty much that's it man they they tell a few stories but i never was blown away by them lyrically not you know yeah, they, they do the, the regular simile thing. Uh, there are a couple light metaphors, but the most creative wordplay you're getting is from K Solo with the spelling things out. Uh, yeah. yeah. There's, there's some imagery that goes on. Like we, we talk about the references, right? Uh, the Gigantor. I can't think of anything that like really stands out that was like, oh, they're really rapping circles. It's more about, like you said, the flex and the bravado. On Jane 2, they, I, I, want, I do want to give them credit for some of the structure because they do a lot of callbacks to the first Jane. But again, you got to be an EPMD fan. To That's what I can say, yeah, because yeah. they did that through all their albums. So Yeah, because there's a part where he says he was bigger, better, faster, stronger. Oh, you got to yeah. know that they said that on the first one. And yeah. then the Anita Baker haircut, he's like, nah, more like Whitney Houston. <laughs> well, you got to get where that came from, too. Bigger, better, stronger, faster. A lot of people don't know where that came from. What's that from? Six Million Dollar Man. <laughs> we can make him better than he was. Bigger, better, stronger, faster. Wow. Like the Bionic Man. Six Million Dollar Man. Crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> even, even the fact that um, 
the giveaway is that she she calls him the master again like that's you, again you gotta know it's like going to it's like when dad dad went to see uh dark knight returns and he's like yeah. hey we didn't like it i said dad did you see the dark knight movie he said no i said what y'all going to see batman movie for now y'all gonna go right in the middle of the new one <laughs> right <laughs> so yeah but that took some creativity they made all those references and then there's a part where he's he's describing the girl and he said uh she had a 300 e with the kit she was packing to kind of describe her body and i'm like okay yeah. that, that was clever yeah. that's like a cosby show where they were calling girls uh double burgers with cheese burgers right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's it for the word people the a part. lot of these rappers watch a lot of tv man oh a lot <laughs> a lot what a lot is of what movies on 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 uh who's booty when he said he had a girl over he said he turned on kung fu <laughs> like that's what y'all watching <laughs> yeah man a lot of tv and movies boy yeah and now yeah, they just sample them now so kicking in like kato yeah yeah it's a lot of that <laughs> what y'all giving this for the wordplay in the bars <laughs> <laughs> i have to give it another three man uh, go with 2.5 yeah. 2.5 yeah. for our resident rap expert all right <laughs> dimension six is the overall quotability that's the punchlines or the poetic wisdom not a lot of punchlines the closest you get uh what is it parish says something like making ends he said you drive a bus i drive a what i drive a bins like <laughs> there's lines like that or like <laughs> when um Excellent. What did what did Eric Sermon say? He said, "Doing damage to the land like Hurricane Gloria." That's it. That's <laughs> it. It was a few more. I'm trying to think of the other one. It was a it was a few more lines in there. But yeah. Yeah, it's a couple, but mm -hmm. it's, it's real basic level. Uh, they probably do more in the vein of poetic wisdom, where they drop a couple jewels, like what Doc was mentioning on. Uh, on it wasn't me it was the fame i like uh the line that stands out with paris said he had that talk with his dad and he said if you hang around nine broke friends you're bound to be the tenth one I was like, yeah. that's a gem that's a gem yeah uh, i'm trying to think of it there's even moments some of their description is kind of silly you know he's the big like, payback they did a few uh snapping necks and stuff like that cash and large checks yeah. yeah like like cute it, it's it's uh it's slick at, at most i think that's what raheem said it's like slick talk at, at most not mm. not anything rewindable and then they get downright silly sometimes when uh when they when they talk about women especially like what what did, what did p say when he was uh on whose booty said it smelled like fish Sardines, yeah. Sardines, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And cold tuna, like it was just. <laughs> I get it. He's trying to paint the scene and describe it, but it's like, uh, okay, you could have said one of those, and it would have got the job done. Uh, and then some like the V-neck skirt. I was yeah. Like, V-neck skirt. I don't, I don't know if that if that exists. <laughs> yeah. Well, like skirt you said, stuff. I mean, because I'm trying to think, like. Like one of the first dudes I had to rewind was Kane and Rakim, so yeah, yeah. So they 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 had a lot. Of, uh, they had their work cut out for them. They, yeah, they weren't. Yeah. I think Raheem said it. They weren't even trying to compete in that lane. They were just like, we're not going to do all of that. <laughs> just let them know we're here too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, ironically, because this album is so popular among rappers, it is very quoted. There's a lot of quotables that came for it. Not, not because they're the slickest lines, just because they're memorable. Uh, so I mean, that's a good sign. They stand at the test of time, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the Roots. You know, I, I mentioned this in the Roots episode. They used the K Solo line. My man came over and said, "Yo, we thought we heard you." The jokes <laughs> on you. Yeah. 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 So you know, a lot of these lines have, have stood the, pat, the, the test of time, right? <laughs> You yeah. overdid it, Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what, that's another one that got quoted. Biggie, Biggie used that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the titles, the titles themselves. People use the titles as lines yeah. in their rap. It wasn't me. It was the fame, the big payback. Yeah. Please listen to my demo. So, 
All right, what y'all giving us for the quotability? Punchlines of poetic wisdom. Mm. I gotta well, stay with three point five. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to go to three point five. All right, y'all both said three point five. What'd you say, bro? I said, I said two point. You said two point. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, Dimension seven. The concepts. Are there any concept songs on here? Uh, <laughs> yeah. You, you had too much, much to drink. Much. The most conceptual is definitely. Uh, you had too much to drink, and probably who's booty. It, it 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 wasn't that good of a concept, but it, <laughs> yeah, that was. It's in it was somewhat really of a message, they, right? <laughs> I don't know the point they were trying to make with the who's booty. Like, uh, you know, Eric Sermon says you can call me gay, you can call me what, or you can call me fruity, uh, which is funny because he, he's you know throughout the rest of his career in the '90s, they definitely poked a lot of rumors at Eric Sermon being on yeah. that side. But it's funny that he addresses it there, but he's like, I'm not doing nothing until I know who's booty. But I don't know where they were going with that. And then the second verse, P is like, it smelled. So <laughs> I walked out and I said, who's booty? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, yeah. I, guess just, I guess she's just being a hoe, so. Yeah, it's just, it wasn't that, well. that was that was a, that was an long way, elongated way of. <laughs> that's all that was. <laughs> yeah, when it came to the, to the women's songs, they kind of lost direction a lot of the time. Yeah, she's a hoe. But uh, <laughs> you had too much to drink. They they definitely they they took a lot of creative uh, turns on that. Like they're doing the, yeah. the little skits. It started with a long skit. It's a skit in between. It's mostly the talking more than the rap, actually. Most of that song is the guy talking like Al Pacino. Yeah. They're, they're playing the cops, I think. I think they are the cops. Mm hmm. He's like, uh, and he really does sound like somebody who's drunk. He's saying the things that someone, <laughs> this is, they're telling you the girl looked like Paul Abdul because he had so many yeah, drinks. Paul Abdul, damn. So by the time he's getting pulled over by the car, he's like, this is Paul Abdul. She's famous. <laughs> <laughs> they got really creative. That's all. All my drinks hard. taste like fruit punch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have nothing to drink but fruit punch. That's all I had. <laughs> so I mean, it, that's that's pretty creative. Even though the beat and everything might be hard to listen to, the raps might be a little hard to listen to. So, what y'all giving us for the concepts? One and a half. No. <laughs> uh, give it a three. Okay. Yeah, I'll give it a three. Yeah, I'll give it a three. Yeah, they set the stage for what we see on some albums in the 90s where people really get creative with, you know, movie scenes and making songs sound like movies. So, yeah. Like I said, it wasn't the best, but it did take some thought. So that takes us to the content dimensions. We at the home stretch now. So uh, externalized content, dimension eight. How much are they talking about society, relationships, political? And then dimension nine is internal, autobiographical material. Uh, Y'all already said they did that a lot on It Wasn't Me, It Was The Fame. Please, please, yeah, yeah. Please listen to my demo. That's telling you kind of their, their stories up to that point. They were only teenagers a couple years before. So, yeah, yeah. The stories about the women they count because that's that's subjects. Uh, but the only time they really get in any anything that's deep outside of themselves is you had too much to drink. That's that's probably it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it wasn't nothing political, too political or nothing, right? So not yeah. much in politics, man. Nah. Yeah. They were just having a good time, and you know, yeah. I, yeah, I, I can't think of anything else. <laughs> so, uh, and, and you can argue those songs are more than enough. That's that's more than a lot of rappers would give. Well, yeah, that was fine then. Yeah, that was fine then. Yeah, but you know, that's I mean, there. Yeah, that wasn't that window. That you know, that's where Chuck came in and you know, yeah. exploded, man. So, and then even what they did personally on the Dimension Nine uh, thing, like 
rappers weren't telling their stories like that. You weren't hearing no. people talk about the struggle. No. They were only talking about the the spoils, of ragadocious yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So pushing pushing the car through traffic, trying to get on. That's that's a right. that's a vulnerable right. moment there. Mm -hmm. And then talking about the fame, a lot of rappers. Shoot, I think the only other one who had done it at that point was Bismarck with the vapors talking about how things change when you get on. Right. So, yeah. so it wasn't me, it was the fame. Those are two creative yeah. spins. And it makes sense because rap was pretty new on recorded wax, right? Yeah. It had only been around yeah. for about nine years. So this is the Wasn't first getting time. that regular radio rotation except on, you know, the weekend stuff and, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe the closest, the closest to it wasn't me. It was the fan was probably Friends by Houdini, where you talk yeah. about how those situations change. Um, but okay, what y'all giving us for uh, the external stuff? How much are they talking outside? We said it's only one song. You had too much to drink. What y'all giving? Yeah, it? so you give it. I guess just a two. A two. Rob, what you giving it? Yeah, I'll go. I'll go with that two as well. That two. All right, and then internal, you got please listen to my demo. You got it wasn't me, it was the fame. They're giving you a little bit more. So what you giving at? Uh, um, uh, 2.5. 2 right. Yeah, I was going to say, I guess just pushing them to one, pushing those up, those two singles you just talked about, I'll push it up to a three. OK. All right, that takes us to the final dimension, the storytelling. All right, so there, there's like four stories on there. You can count you had too much to drink as some sort of story. They're not really telling you like, uh, they're not saying, I, yeah, yeah, I guess they, they're describing them and Frank B on the road. But like we said, there's more talking than rapping. And yeah. then please listen to my demos, the story, Who's Booty and uh, Jane 2. I'll say this about Jane 2. I don't understand much like Clark Kent and Superman, how people can't tell. It's like, they, for as clever as they set that story up, are you telling me PMD meets the same girl he met on the first Jane and didn't know it was her? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like Jane. I think one part they messed up on, I don't like it. I don't like E rapping the girl part yeah because he and he's being a female yeah it's yeah. like yeah y'all yeah. taking this much time to be creative y'all should just found a, a, a any female who could rap <laughs> to you know or, you know yeah. the fit in parts because it's like yeah. hold up you, you're being two people <laughs> we, we, we understand it but i i don't you know i wouldn't have did it like that yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's a little throw off he or he could have you know the kind of the slick rick trick would have been to like make his voice like a girl that would have been a thing like you know slick rick does that all the time like yeah. he was mona lisa and he was himself but eric was just rapping in his regular voice <laughs> <laughs> so it, it is questionable right he's like you gotta be bigger better <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Chris. Like, <laughs> it was weird. Yeah, yeah they could have did that better. But there you go, Ryan. That's what I'm talking about. Rap analysis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said it. And I didn't say it. I didn't even think about it like that. But that was weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it was weird because I'm, I'm waiting for the twist. And I'm like, so the only twist is because she said the word master which is something that she said in the first song. He's like, oh, yeah. snap, this is Jane. You you danced with her in the club. You took her home. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Was it really because the Whitney Houston haircut? That was the big difference? You couldn't tell what <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. So they, no, more. they do a better job on Please Listen to My Demo. Like They tell the story a little bit more clear, straightforward. You can follow it. You, you understand everything that's happening as it happens. That's probably the, the best story on there. Yeah. 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 But that's that's four stories on the 12-song album. So no matter if they they may not be Slick Rick level, <laughs> but... Yeah. I mean, and, and that's not their strength. So just the fact yeah. that they did that is cool, you know? So... Yeah, and they gave you four. Right. It gave you four, so... 
with you. So what would y'all give in this album for the storytelling? Three and a half. Three and a half. I'll go with three. Three. Okay. All right. I'm glad I made y'all think a little bit. Y'all were throwing out a lot of fives and fours. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, on that note, um, that concludes our Category 2 review and breakdown of the classic album Unfinished Business by EPMD, 35 years old this year. It's always a pleasure when I have my fam on. I gotta get my brother on here for, for another Houdini album since I, he missed the, uh, we weren't able to do the Escape one together, but we gonna get it for, uh, for the next album. Yeah, y'all know what it is, till next time. F a rap critic and talk about it while I live it. Word to meth.